Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ninth event of the Safe Havens Freedom Talk series. This time in collaboration with Women Chapter International. My name is Matam, and I'm happy to introduce Suche Stima Shimonti, the editor of the English section of womenchapter.com, Shumu Hag, communications director at the Women Chapter International, and Shupruti Dahar, founder of the Women Chapter International. And today they will have a conversation on the story of this platform and the challenges faced during its journey. And now I will leave the word to Shupruti after we see the video clip. Thank you uh, for inviting us uh, to uh, in uh, today's meeting or uh, today's program. And I would like to thank uh, Savings and uh, Free Talks uh, for, for organizing such events. It's very really important for us to tell about us, I think, because we are. Um, you can say they are fighting for our rights, uh, to establish our rights and to talk about our rights. So I'm, as you say that I'm Shukti Dhar, I'm the editor, founder editor of Women's Chapter and founder, um, you can founder chairman of Women's Chapter International. Okay, if I, uh, in the very beginning, Beginning, I would like to say about women chapter, how I established this women chapter and and uh, what was the purpose behind this. Uh, maybe we can uh, play our PowerPoint uh, in this uh, uh, women chapter, uh, our slogan or main uh, chooser towards a change. It's a movement towards a change. Uh, women Chapter is the first ever online feminist writing platform for women in Bangladesh. Uh, but people say, we don't say that it is also the first ever feminist portal in language in the entire world. Um, 
though we are not sure about this, but people. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, look at our history, that um, the early 2000s was very important uh, in, uh, in the recent history of Bangladesh. Uh, as the country kept leaning uh, to the culture of Islamic fundamentalism, the state of women became even more um, difficult than it had ever been in the past. So as an activist and analyst, here I want to mention that uh, I have been working as a journalist for more than 22 years and uh, I started my career in a newspaper. At the same time, uh, I worked in newspaper and BBC radio and uh, online newspaper and um, online media on radio. So I just thought that uh, I can uh, as a journalist with my experience uh, working with different media houses, I can uh, get a platform uh, where only women will work. And just we wanted to see the world through women's eyes. So in that time, as an activist and journalist, I was painfully aware of the lack of a safe space or platform where Bangladeshi women could open discuss the issues were matter of life or death to uh, safety from domestic and gender uh, domestic or uh, gender based violence, sexual violence, access to information on their productive rights, etc. It is from this urgency that women chapter was born, but there was another history also. Uh, we had a Shabak movement. We call it a great movement in our life. Uh, because it shaped our uh, new life. Uh, so in the late 2000 and early 2013, the youth of the country uh, took on to the, to the streets, demanding justice for the war crimes committed against its population during the liberation war in uh, 1971 by the Pakistani army collaborators. And most of them are now, now connected to and heading the numerous pro-Islamic fundamentalist political parties such as Jamaat Islam and Hepazuti Islam in Bangladesh. The whole country woke up uh, with the hope of a of new transformation or a new beginning, not unlike the Arab Spring. This movement, widely known as the Shabag, a popular uh, locality in the Bangladeshi capital of Dhaka, where this started, uh, like the Harish Square, Egypt, or we call it Projonmo uh, Chattur. It means the word for generation in Bangla. So this is known as Shabag movement. Uh, they were it opened people's eyes towards our areas in the society disparately uh, in the need to reform. So we started the movement on the 5th of February, 2010. The first, I can recall that we were mainly 70 people maybe at the first time, at the very beginning. But the other next day, it was uh, thousands of thousands. And the next day, it was millions already. So you can imagine the, how big it was. And um, politics of fundamentalism in Bangladesh, um, maybe you already know about that uh, it was emerging power of uh, fundamentalism in Bangladesh, uh, while the progressive movement started to gain momentum in the country. In 2003, the fundamentalist political parties, such as the Hifazut Islam, also struck back. So they uh, had their 13 demands during a rally on May 5th, 2013, will give an insight so as to their vision of turning the country into an Islamic republic ruled by the Sharia law. Here are uh, 13 demands of a positive. Just I don't want to mention all the 13 demands. Uh, 
uh, but uh, most of the tunes were uh, against women. So we women, as a women, we were uh, so we were not scared, but we were so much angry uh, because uh, they demanded that the women should go to the kitchen, they shouldn't uh, study, uh, they should go to the university with a male. Uh, uh, can I say that uh, with men, with boys? So of course it made us very much angry, and we we did it a rally. It's a big rally, and we tried to who were involved in the Shabak movement. We tried to bring all the women organization or other liberal or progressive organization in, into this rally, and then as a journalist I felt such you know that a vacuum in this movement because something was missing i felt that there was no uh, connection between the organization so i at that time as a journalist what i can do i can write i can do uh, protest uh, on the street every day so i decided to create a platform where women can express their views, opinions, then ex uh, they can raise their voices. So in May, I remember, in 20th May, in 2013, I created this women chapter. So women chapter started its uh, journey. Uh, so, uh, immediately following its inception, it became clear that women chapter had hit the right chord among youth of the country. It filled a long, felt a void not only for the women, but progressive-minded men of the country as well, with its unique and revolutionary content. And uh, with young and fresh writers, it created a new standard even uh, for the long-established mainstream media. Here, I want to mention another thing that in the mainstream media, we couldn't publish our articles, so we couldn't write because we were not a writer, we are not a columnist, but uh, we had our opinion, we had our voice. So there was no place for women chapter where we can express ourselves. So when we created this platform, everyone started writing there, uh, every woman who wanted to write. And even, even mainstream media, uh, when they saw the popularity of men's chapter, they also um, brought many changes in their policy. So nowadays we can see the mainstream media, uh, lots of women are writing in the mainstream media. And even they have, uh, they have a open corner for women writers. So it's a very positive things. And um, besides mainstream media, there are lots of other feminist portals are coming out. Uh, uh, so women chapter, uh, we can say that the paved way uh, for others. It was not uh, so easy to create this path. Um, and in, uh, it was a women chapter who launched the Me Too movement in Bangladesh in 2018. We were very much criticized at the same time uh, with our polarity. Uh, and we threatened several times, many times, uh, not only me as an, ed as an editor and my writer also. Um, many of our writers stopped uh, writing in the women chapter because the threats uh, and bullying and all but we have uh, continued our um, journey. So usually women chapter open English uh, section uh, in 2016. It's a, we have open a separate section. Before it was only one carry in the whole um, women chapter. And uh, Shuchi Smita Shimonti took over uh, as the editor of the English section. Uh, maybe uh, later um, she will uh, explain um, how she worked there and why 
she uh, joined at this uh, section and I can uh, just mention here that uh, in this eight years journey, uh, Women Chapter has got two awards. One is international, one is national. International award in 2012, uh, for Deutsche Welle, Jenny's International Broadcaster, selected Women Chapter in the block category. For the Bob International Award, uh, we got based on line activism and Women Chapter after the award of the websites and new polls of 16 different languages, it is a huge uh, win for us because we had to beat Ukraine and uh, uh, it was, if I'm not wrong, it was uh, Japan. Uh, so we had to beat them that time. In Ukraine was so popular of the revolution. Uh, so it was not easy uh, to win this award. And in 2016, uh, I received the Onunna Award. It's a very prestigious award in Bangladesh. If they, are, uh, they gave this award uh, to 10 women uh, for contribution in various. So in two, uh, it was not in 2016, it was 2015. Uh, I received this Onunna Award. Uh, for my work in the women's chapter. And uh, if I say about uh, how difficult was uh, our journey, uh, so it, it had, you know, maybe you already know that Bangladesh has a censorship and digital security act to we, um, all the draconian law in our history because uh, our government has did this act uh, to silence us, to silence all the dissidents, bloggers, thinkers, and all who their voice. So it's a very, uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, Black Day for uh, that when they enacted this Digital Security Act. And um, the portal kept uh, gaining popular among the progressives. It also kept attracting the wrath of a government that didn't appreciate its publications, criticizing various government policies as it kept ending backwards uh, to appease its pro-Islamic fundamental allies. And as a result, first it's unofficial allies forces, supporters, various lobbying entities started harassing writers and editors, which already mentioned, and online by taking on a massive online being campaign against them. And when they didn't stop them from writing, sharing their option uh, freely, they changed their strategy, launching a full on legal attack using, using this draconian digital security act. It's a non bailable um, act. Uh, so if you are arrested under this act, you can be put into jail without asking any question. So it's, and, uh, Women chapter and me as an editor and the Smith as an editor, and our writers, uh, you know, we were under this act. <laughs> and there are some people, fundamentalist people. I don't say that only fundamentalists. There are other people also who don't like us. So they filed a case. It's three cases I, I can call. They filed three cases against us. And recently there was a um, and that uh, have submitted the final report um, to the court. It means the police, uh, they did an investigation against women chapter. We are hardly just sentiment and we are publishing so much hatred towards no, towards one specific region 
and uh, and they did investigation they found us guilty that we are doing such things uh, through our writing and they have submitted their final report we call um, charge sheet uh, against us where they asked even the police who was investigator in this case he has um, asked in interpol to call inter to you know arrest us so it's a um, huge harassment of course uh, maybe now i can hand over to shmita maybe she will say some few words. thank you so to start with i would like to share a bit of my personal journey because i think for activists and uh, when we want to share our messages why we are work, uh, fighting for certain causes it's important to share a bit of our personal story so uh, i started writing when i was young i used to write sometimes short stories but i was also uh, sharing my po political opinions at times uh, for example during the iraq invasion i wrote a open letter to the us president because i condemned what was happening over there and also i wrote an open letter to bangla bhai who was an infamous terrorist when i was very young i was going to school at that point so later on uh, when i was doing my graduation in india um, this is the time when the shabak movement happened so i was just a, um, yeah i was witnessing it from outside and we were also having discussion because in india there are uh, lots of bangladeshi students and i was involved in uh, youth led peace groups from my college time so people would ask us about our opinion what do you think about the movement so this was the, actually the turning point in our, uh, the history of bangladesh in, uh, if if i talk about the last decade and so this is the time when i went through a personal transformation because uh, as i had a, a mixed religious background because of my parents marriage i always uh, identified myself as someone who is uh, leaning towards the secular ideologies and for that reason uh, for long time awami league the current ruling party in bangladesh they were considered as the only savior for the country because the other party bangladesh nationalist party party already became infamous because of their direct relation with uh, fundamentalist groups such as jamaat e islami and hifazat e islam so for lots of people who identify themselves as non religious or secular or humanist army league looked like the only option and that was the same for me and for long time i was having this plan to uh, crack the civil service exam and yeah serve the country from yeah serve the state but in 2015 uh, my ideologies were shaken because of uh, first of all the killing of the blogger started and the government instead of condemning the fundamentalists they instead blamed them for writing things but it is uh, freedom of expression so how a secular government can say that i thought to myself and that's when i guess my blind devotion as a young uh, young adult started uh, you know it be, it it was shaken because i didn't expect that from our milik which is the secular uh, democratic government of our country and then in 2015 i also had this awkward encounter with cp gang so cp gang is kind of a uh, watchdog for our government they monitor uh, monitor what people are writing against the government on facebook and they were very active in uh, i think from 2014 to 2016 if i'm not mistaken because yeah i'm i don't remember the timeline correctly but they would uh, threaten the people who would criticize the government even if it's just a one sentence that i don't agree with this policy or this particular incident before you know there are hundreds of people attacking you and if you are a woman they would give you rape threats so this is what happened to me uh shupriti dhar who also happens to be my mother she criticized the government in one of the facebook posts and when i saw it uh she was getting rape threats from the cp gang members so when i tried to uh, protest that you you can't use such vulgar languages i got rape threats as well and as a result of that for two months during my vacation in bangladesh i was really afraid to step out by myself and i had to request for uh, in my office if they can give me the public transportation because i really felt uncomfortable stepping out because this incident went viral 
the screenshot of our Facebook conversation was everywhere. So I was just afraid. And uh, as I mentioned before, I was writing from childhood. And when I started my uh, master's program, I started writing about issues related to women. So, and I joined a platform called Safety First for Girls. It was founded in Zambia and I was serving remotely. So uh, in 2016, I was approached by Shupriti that if I would be interested in the English section of women chapter, and because I was already working on this and I was trying to develop my skills as a writer, I took it up as a challenge. And uh, because this is the English section, I thought it would be important uh, that uh, I look for translators who can translate some of our best write-ups from Bengali to English so that non-Bangladeshi audience can also understand the wave of uh, feminism in Bangladesh, how the femin uh, women are thinking about the issues because every context is very different. And secondly, I also thought since I had uh, already built an international network because of volunteering with different youth-led groups, why don't I uh, promote a, a women chapter amongst my own networks? And a uh, lot of people were in enthusiastic about it. They reached out to, to me with their articles and this is how the journey started. And now it's been nearly five years that I'm working as the editor of the English section. So I have encountered a few challenges along the way. Uh, I think within a few months of uh, uh, starting to work as the editor, I already got threats and criticism for publishing certain articles amongst my own network. Uh, some people were not happy and that also impacted my academic life because it also led to campus politics and why I was publishing certain articles, even though I tried to be as strategic as possible in the beginning. And also with the volunteers, yes, there were volunteers who dropped out and there were certain situations where the writers kept calling me to remove the articles because they were getting threats within their family. And I also had a volunteer who was forcibly married off. I don't know if it had something to do with her volunteering with women chapter, but this was, this happened all of a sudden that her family just decided to throw a surprise party on her birthday and the surprise was a marriage and she had no clue. And since then she didn't work with our portal. And later consequences with this Digital Security Act, which is, uh, which you can compare with the blasphemy law of Pakistan. Like in Pakistan, you don't even need to be an activist uh, to be charged under the blasphemy law. Somebody can just use it for the, uh, taking a revenge on somebody mostly belonging to religious minority groups. Likewise, in Bangladesh, if the government doesn't like you or the Islamic fundamentalists don't like what you are doing, you can be charged under the Digital Security Act. And there are people who have been in prison for several months and even a year and only few have been released. And these are the people who are mostly having, uh, who mostly come from the elite backgrounds of Bangladesh, who have people to back them up. But what about people in villages who get charged under uh, Digital Security or Act or its predecessor, IT ICT 57 Act? And because now media is also under the pressure of the government, so we don't get to uh, know a lot about these people later on. Okay, this person has been arrested, but what happened after that? Did this person come out at all? What happened to the families? Because um, being accused of hurting religious sentiments, it's, um, it's a very dangerous uh, situation in Bangladesh. So yeah, we don't get to know because uh, newspapers cannot publish things as and when they wish. And when they do, there are consequences. So these are some of the challenges we are also dealing with uh, ever since this platform was created. And personally, I don't feel safe to go to Bangladesh with all these cases because um, in past, there have also been instances where people have been detained from the airport. And as I said, it takes a lot of lobbying and you need to really have powerful lobbying to get you released but you never know if you will be alive in the prison to be released. With the current situation, it's just getting worse and worse. And the government, which, is, which still claims to be a secular democratic government, they have, co uh, they have compromised with the radical groups. Now, a lot of these oppressive policies against women, before it was just Jamaat-e-Islami or Hifazat-e-Islam uh, 
uh, organizing public demonstrations on the streets that we don't want women to go to school or we want women to the kitchen. But now uh, government is, um, I don't know how to say it in English, like it's, yeah, it's becoming part of the official policies of the country with child marriage, with domestic violence. Uh, the government just wants to stay in power at the moment in Bangladesh. So they will compromise with anyone, be it the Islamic fundamentalists in Bangladesh or because India is our powerful neighbor in the region. So to keep a good relationship with India, sometimes the government is silent on the matters relating to oppression of minorities in India. But in recent times that have changed, but yeah, the current party just keeps changing its narrative. It's about what suits them at that moment, just to stay in power. Yeah, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, Shumita. Maybe uh, just I'll take this platform for a little while. And then, okay, you have come to know about one chapter and women chapters learning. Now, uh, after eight years, uh, actually, we were planning to uh, move further. So we decided to create one chapter international. Uh, when I'm uh, living in Sweden, you know that I was uh, trained in uh, 2015, 16, 17. So I had to move uh, from the country. So I came here in Sweden. Uh, here I was thinking that uh, how can we help uh, women and other human rights activists uh, from such men or uh, you know what is uh, what's are happening in Bangladesh. So, and that's why we created this women chapter international. Maybe I can hand over now to Shumu Hawk that uh, she will explain very clearly how uh, we started our journey and um, actually what is our plan to do in future. Uh, so, Shumu. Uh, thank you, Safe Haven uh, Freedom Thoughts, for giving Women Chapter International and WomenChapter.com this opportunity to uh, present our organizations here. It's a great honor to be here today. Um, so Shupriti and Shujismita has already given you uh, quite a bit of background. Uh, before we move on to um, more uh, details about the Women Chapter International or what we um, address as WCI, uh, let's watch a quick video um, that kind of um, captures the essence of this transition from the portal to the organization. So here it comes. And also the video will have um, a little bit of a message from two of our um, other board members who couldn't be here today. So here it goes. Camilla Carlson and I'm a board member of Women's Chapter and I have been a board member from the start and I live in Sweden 
and I think this the work who uh, woman chapter is planning to do is very important and uh, uh, we are in a lot of uh, we have connections in a lot of uh, other countries and it's especially important for uh, the children and for the young girls so this work is very very important Greetings from Bangladesh. I'm Monjun Nahar. I'm a founder member of Women's Chapter International. I'm taking immense pleasure to introduce you all with Women's Chapter International. Actually, Women's Chapter International as an organization is new, but its journey has begun since long time. Through an online portal, Women's Chapter raising the discriminatory issue against women, marginalized people, and also developing the capacity of women writers to write the women issue, gender issue, and identify the issues that has created uh, discrimination uh, among uh, the marginalized people and women all over the globe. So that is the uh, basic point of a starting point of Women Chapter International. Later, Women Chapter International took its respiration from Sweden with the aim to create a just society. Our focus on to reduce uh, the discriminatory uh, practice against women and girls in different countries. Um, primarily, we focus on Bangladesh. As you all know that Bangladesh is highly class-based and gender-based society. So we are uh, focusing to reduce gender-based violence and especially during the COVID period, we are focusing on early child marriage, uh, safe pregnancy, safe motherhood and also uh, domestic violence. Uh, along with this, our dream is to work all over the globe and people like you, the similar like, uh, similar uh, minded people uh, to fight together, to work together. Uh, so that is the uh, brief introduction of Women Chapter International. Thank you. video gave you a little bit of uh, background as to why we created it and what are some of the areas uh, that we want to work in. Um, I am, uh, we had a presentation prepared for uh, reviewing, but after all these um, PowerPoints, uh, I thought let's just talk and share um, our ideas with you instead. Um, when uh, I started writing for women chapter in 2014, um, I also uh, felt some backlash uh, from uh, people around me. Um, I, I got some threats as well. Um, I can no longer, I do not have any cases filed against me, but when I do go back home, I do have to deactivate my social media. I cannot move around freely and uh, people would um, steal our articles and publish them with distorted titles that would make it look like we're trying to um, insult the sentiments of uh, people, uh, people's religious views. Uh, so um, things back home um, in Bangladesh to say the list is not very conducive to uh, creating um, an environment where you can write or share your ideas freely. 
And uh, even imagine that a uh, country that is uh, 50 and celebrating its 50 years of independence would have uh, more freedom for its women. But unfortunately, things started going backwards as uh, Shuti Smita has uh, detailed um, earlier. So we realized that we needed to create a platform that will have the organizational structure and we'll be able to have that global force that will give us the freedom to work freely, will give us the freedom to work on the policy level, will uh, give us the freedom to create um, a, a conversation across the globe and uh, do lobbying if necessary from uh, one government to the other to network with other similar organizations so that uh, these issues can be addressed. And um, as you, you know, with globalization, these issues are not only limited to Bangladesh. All South Asian countries have similar issues uh, when it comes to human rights abuse, when it comes to gender-based violence, when it comes to um, women suffering um, because of uh, not having the basic rights as human beings. So we wanted to work in those areas. Um, so Women Chapter International was uh, formed as an NGO. It is registered uh, in Sweden, but we plan to work not only in Bangladesh and Sweden, we want to work in um, African countries. We want to work in uh, the Bangladeshi diaspora in uh, North America. We want to work in Europe. And we have started networking with a lot of organizations all over the globe already. So some of the um, some of the issues that we have um, addressed already uh, and that are very important to us um, are, uh, for example, um, rape as a war crime. Um, if you're familiar with the history of Bangladesh, you know that it is one of the countries that has the highest um, amount of rape committed during its liberation war in 1971, highest in terms of what has been recorded in history. So uh, we started working about working uh, around that topic. And then we realized that because of that uh, trauma that has not been addressed properly, those, those survivors were not given the support that they needed. That trauma has been handed down to generations, to their um, descendants, and uh, people are still suffering as a result of that. And this is not a unique issue to Bangladesh. Uh, so we started um, doing these webinars where we connected to uh, survivors from Rwanda genocide. We started connecting with people from uh, Europe, from Kosovo, from uh, Poland, from all over the world. Um, and we want to continue on that road. We want to work with um, survivors of sexual violence. We want to create a support system for them. Uh, we want to make sure that they have a um, rehabilitation program so that they can also reach their potential as complete human beings in the society today. We want to address issues such as female genital mutilation. That is a very, very serious and a very real problem in Europe today. When we talk about uh, feminism in Europe, because it used to be such a very white collar feminism, even 20 years ago, um, when we talk, talk about third and fourth wave feminism, it has gone way beyond those basic things. But if you look at today's Europe, because of the globalization, the, uh, the population and their needs have changed. If you look at the demography today, it's not any longer that particular um, population that would relate to those fourth wave or third wave feminism, right? So their needs have become much more basic. So we felt that there is a vacuum there. There is a need for those um, crimes such as honor killings, such as 
honor honor based crimes such as forced marriage. Uh, those things are a very, very real threat to South Asian diaspora all over the world. So we want to make sure that those things are addressed and uh, that we can work in the policy level. Uh, we want to make sure that we work with, um, we create that support system so that no one, uh, no one can ever um, fall through the crack ever again. Um, and uh, it's it's a very women chapter international is a very new organization and we have only um, completed our first year um, we're uh, to be specific it's been only 15 months or so so it's a very new journey but we do have a lot of dreams and uh, we have been connecting with some amazing organizations and we have been getting a lot of uh, response from the diaspora, uh, from the Bangladeshi diaspora, from the African diaspora, from all over the globe. And we want to continue on that path. Uh, we want to make sure that um, those without the voices, the survivors of war crimes, the survivors of um, those trauma that couldn't voice their um, stories because because of the shame, because of the stigma that is connected to them. We want to make sure that their voices are heard. We want to create that platform globally, not just within Bangladesh. We want to make sure that platform exists wherever it's needed, be it Rwanda or in South America or in Kosovo or it can be a South Asian community in Toronto. We want to make sure that everybody gets the support that they needed. So that is where WCI wants to be there. And we hope that um, everyone will um, help us uh, and guide us uh, on that journey. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shumo. Uh, for clearly stating that uh, what we actually want to do in uh, future. And I want to just uh, add here, and I want to take this advantage of this program and that we have started our new journey with the Women's Chapter International. And uh, we registered in uh, June 2020, so 15 or 16 months have uh, uh, already passed. So, but uh, in this pandemic, we were not uh, sitting idle, you know. Uh, we were doing so many networking we have done and uh, we have done so many webinars. And uh, of course, you know, that we don't have any money for this, we don't have any budget for this. But we are doing it, you know, with our own ambition. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain that, uh, that we have loved this work and what we should do. It's a well, chapter international, it's a human rights organization, but what's the difference between other organizations with the Women Chapter International is that we would be, uh, we focus on domestic violence and forced marriage, child marriage in our South Asian countries and South Asian diaspora all over the world and uh, trauma, of course, trauma of war rape victims uh, and uh, rape victims. So we have lots of other, you know, um, perspective to do. So uh, here is the difference between other organizations with the uh, Women Chapter International that we want to focus on uh, human things. What, uh, you know, don't do other organizations. So we maybe, uh, women rights activists, we we feel the pain. What is happening with women all over the world? So we want to bring um, women, all, all our organization, uh, to work with us. And uh, I hope that uh, who is leading us our program, they will uh, they will feel the necessity of this organization and that they will uh, extend their hand also towards. Thank you so much. Thank you, Safe Havens. Thank you.
freedom box for uh, uh, such a program. It was an immense pleasure for us to introduce, uh, you know, <laughs> express ourselves. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I think it's been a very rich and informative talk. Thank you again, Women Chapter International, and also our web partner, HowlRound. Uh, the Freedom Talk series is a concept closely connected to the annual Safe Havens Conference, and it focuses on the issues regarding threats towards artistic freedom, free press, and intangible heritage. These talks are organized by the Safe Havens Freedom Talks and sponsored by the Swedish Institute. And the next Freedom Talk will be in collaboration with the Artistic Freedom Initiative very soon. Thank you again for joining us today and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>